You guys ready? I'm Colby Armstrong, a father of four here living in Pittsburgh. Uh, I do Pittsburgh Penguins coverage on the pre and post game show for radio and TV with AT&T Sportsnet. Also working nationally up in Canada with Rogers Sportsnet and make trips back and forth talking hockey. I guess I'm now 39 years old and been retired for seven years, but everything kind of started for me in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. It's like a mouthful. It was a comfortable small city in Western Canada in the prairies, farmland. Growing up, my dad was a welder and ex-hockey player. My mom teaches power skating and figure skating, which got me into figure skating when I was younger. I think I figure skated for about four years. I was truly a rink rat just because of what my mom did for a job and my obsession with hockey. and and skating. The Pittsburgh Penguins first round draft selection is Colby Armstrong. I was drafted in 2001, 21st overall in the first round by the Penguins uh, in Sunrise, Florida. It was a great experience. I was there with my mom, my dad, and my brother. Got to go up on the stage like everything you see with the draft. I got to experience that and all the interviews that ensued afterwards and craziness. Uh, it was all kind of unexpected on you know, what happens or how it works. But it was a heck of an experience in a really cool place. Yeah, I mean, I, I came in in a, a pretty good situation with a lot of young guys on our team. You get uh, bugged quite a bit by the other team about my baby face. And I can't grow a beard and all these guys have goatees and they're like, where's yours? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> Some of those years in Wilkes-Barre was the best time in my life in hockey. and. The experiences I had there, playing with tons of different guys, the coaching, making sure that I was NHL ready was huge for me. I thought I got better every year there. I still have friends from back there and visit now. I actually married a girl from there. So uh, growing up really professionally in Wilkes-Barre and Pittsburgh with my best hockey buddies in the world brings back unbelievable memories for me. Chris Beach is onside. Back door, Colby Armstrong scores! Armstrong scores! Armstrong scores! The Penguins win in triple overtime! The longest game in team history! I remember my call up in my first NHL game. It was just after Christmas, so like my family was down. My sister and my parents were were visiting me in, in Wilkes-Barre over the holidays. And a few days later, on the 6th of January, I scored my first NHL goal. It was just kind of like a rebound in front, and I crashed in from the back door on the power play. And that was a, like a big moment for me and getting the opportunity to play and, and live out my dream. Colby, you are not only Sid's friend, good friend, you're also his roommate, right? Yep. What's that like? <laughs> What's that been like, being Sid's roommate? Yeah, I think he's the only guy that can put up with my snoring, so good on him for that, but I don't, I don't, I don't know. I showed up one road trip and walked into the room and there was Sid, Sid in the room, so I don't know how it got structured that I was with him or how it worked out that he wanted to be my roommate, if that's the case, but it was great for me to be dialed in and around Sid, who was, you know, so on to see like how he handled himself every day and how he handled himself around fans or media on the road or at hotels. It started off as a great, fun relationship, just like, you know, two buddies hanging out all the time. And I think it made me better. I remember the tagline, like, Experience the Evolution, which was cool because uh, on the poster that they showed, it was like, you know, gradually getting like different draft picks. And I was like the guy in the furthest distance at this time because I was starting to become an older, young guy. <laughs> Nonetheless, it was, it was a good marketing idea, I think, because our team was on the rise and we were so young and kind of the pieces were starting to fall into place as the years went on. So it was, it was very fitting for our team. Snowy day, celebration of hockey in Buffalo. 73,000 here, and Sidney Crosby's line starts against that of Tim Connolly. Winter Classic 2008, this was the first of the Winter Classic series. We got to play the Buffalo Sabres. You know, expectations, we didn't know. We'd never done it before at this level, but it was supposed to bring you back to your childhood and playing outdoors or pond hockey. A great event, a cool experience, and to score a goal, I think it was 21 seconds into the game. Here are the Penguins driving to the Buffalo net, and Crosby knocked away and picked up right in front by the Penguins, and Colby Armstrong has scored immediately for the Pans. 21 seconds in. Oh, great balls of fire. It's the fastest goal in Winter Classic history, and the first goal. Sid just kind of took it through everyone, took it wide, 
pushing the puck through snow like a snow plow. And then I happened just to follow him up and clean up a rebound to beat Ryan Miller. So people weren't even in their seats yet, I don't think, at the game. It was that quick. And so I sometimes hit up social media, like, still got it. I think we've announced the trades. We've traded Eric Christensen, Colby Armstrong, first round pick in this draft, Angela Esposito for Marion Hosa and Pasquale Dupuis. February 26, 2008, the trade deadline that sent me to the Atlanta Thrashers. It was something that truly caught me off guard. I was pregame napping as I usually would for two hours from two to four. My phone started blowing up. It was my mom trying to get a hold of me. And I answered the phone and said, Mom, like, why are you calling me? You know I have a game tonight. Like, what are you doing? I was mad at my mom. And she broke the news to me that I'd been traded. And I asked where, and she didn't really give me an answer. And I said, Atlanta? It's very difficult for me to part with Christensen and Armstrong. These guys have been drafted by the Penguins. They're quality character people and became huge assets, obviously, to the team. That's tough to do anytime you do that. And, and you know, to make that call is not great. I wasn't happy about it. I'm still not happy about it. He's on your radio, he's on your TV, he's on your ice. Welcome back, number 20, Colby Armstrong. Post-career, changing it up and trying something new. I'd always had teammates and my parents and my agent hint towards this part of the hockey business. Media, being in front of the camera and talking about hockey has always been something I've enjoyed doing or you know, having fun with local crews of our teams and, and doing stuff in the room. Reached out to Roger Sportsnet, who had just gotten the NHL rights deal up in Canada and slowly got worked into getting some experience on TV and on radio. And that's kind of how it started. And then moving back here to Pittsburgh has been amazing. The Penguins have treated myself and my family so, so well. First two years back here, being able to do radio and work with the team here, uh, the Penguins went back to back, so life was li life was pretty good and pretty exciting. It's been amazing some of the cool things I've gotten to do from covering a Stanley Cup Finals, championships, being around championship teams. Sit in with Stan Saverin and, and take my son with me into one of those convertibles going down through the parade and, and witnessing and feeling that and working with people that have been here a real long time. Jay Caulfield, Rob King. Bob Erie to the old two-niner, Josh Getzoff and Mike Lang. I, I couldn't be luckier here locally and nationally up in Canada working with some extremely talented people. I've learned a lot and, and got a lot better and happy to still be around hockey.